good morning, Tunes. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we are talking all about arid versus humid reptiles. Reptiles that like it dry versus reptiles that like it wet. This is obviously a very broad topic so we're just going to be kind of making some quick little points about each one to help you. Maybe you're trying to figure out if you want a leopard gecko or a crested gecko as your first pet or an Indonesian blue tongue skink versus a bearded dragon or versus a northern blue tongue skink. So we're just going to kind of go through the pros and cons of each sort of setup and then you can decide what works best for you. Before we get started this video is sponsored by I Heart Geckos. So make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. So that leads us right into the very first topic is the animals. I mean, this should be your number one concern if you are trying to figure out what works best for you anyway. This should be the first thing you look at to help you narrow it down. What kind of pet are you looking for? On the arid side of things, you're gonna have things like leopard geckos and bearded dragons and Rankin's dragons and hog noses, uh, northern blue tongue skinks, Peter's banded skinks, toad headed agamas. There's the list obviously goes on and on and on. On the humid side of things, we have things like crested geckos and crocodile skinks, cave geckos, gargoyle geckos, chihua geckos, leeches, Indonesian blue tongue skinks, vine snakes. And of course, you're going to have things that are sort of in the middle, ball pythons. I mean, they're more on the humid side. Corn snakes, they're kind of more on the arid side, but somewhere in the middle. You have a lot of options here. So finding out the sorts of animals that you like is obviously going to be the number one thing. But if you are between two animals, and you're just trying to figure it out, and one of them happens to be arid, one of them happens to be humid, then let's keep going. <laughs> Next up, we have the costs. This is a thing that can vary greatly. Honestly, it just depends again on what it is you're setting up. They could potentially cost about the same with more humid animals. Normally you're going to need to go with a loose substrate because loose substrate holds in humidity. Whereas with a arid animal, you can do loose substrate. Or if you are looking into like tile or paper towel, which is the route that some people go, obviously that's going to be cheaper than replacing loose substrate all the time. Other than that, I mean, they both can be bioactive and have real plants. They both can have loose substrate. They both can have lights or different light requirements, heat requirements. They both can do fake plants. They both can do decorations. The costs are honestly going to be about the same depending on what you do. I just feel like cost is a thing that is on everyone's list when they look into these sorts of things. So I thought that I would just add it here anyway. Setups. This is when we get into fun things. So on the arid side of things, you are going to be setting up a very deserty setup where on the humid sides of things, you're going to be setting up a very rainforesty setup. This is sometimes the turning point for people in making their decision because which would you rather look at? Would you rather look at a desert setup? Would you rather look at a small piece of a rainforest? Would you rather have a dry setup? Would you rather spray down a tank every day? Spraying down a tank every day for the human animals. It is a little bit more work, but that might be worth it to you. That might be therapeutic for you to spray down a tank every day. Personally, I really like both. I, in general, tend to like the way that humid tanks look more just because of all the greenery. In general, though, animals that come from more arid climates tend to be diurnal sorts of reptiles and tend to need more powerful lights, UVB lights and heating lights. So looking at things like a bearded dragon, your mastix, a northern blue tongue skink, a chuckwalla, any of those sorts of more popular pet reptiles, those are all daytime animals they all are out and active in the day, in the sunlight, in the desert. So more powerful UV and more powerful heating is sort of a thing as opposed to animals that live in trees in the rainforest like the crested geckos, girl geckos, crocodile skinks. They're always hiding in the wild. Cave geckos literally live in caves. Ball pythons are usually in holes buried during the day. Indonesian blue tongue skinks are an exception there and so are fire skinks. That's definitely an exception. They both do need daytime light, but in general, that is kind of something to keep in mind. And speaking of 
setups, bioactivity, bioactive tanks. You can do a bioactive tank for either types of setup. Personally, I find it so much easier to do bioactive for humid animals. I have failed repeatedly to do bioactive for arid animals. I just cannot seem to get the cleanup crew right. I mean, it works, but it doesn't do as good as humid setups. Arid bioactive setups are just so much more difficult for me. However, they are doable. You may need to special order things for arid bioactive tanks. So at least where I live, you can go to just any chain pet store and they now have isopods and springtails and things like that. However, they only have springtails for humid climates and they have just general super common types of isopods, usually ones that are going to be more hardy in humid climates. But more things do need to go into bioactive humid tanks as opposed to bioactive arid tanks. With bioactive arid tanks, you don't need things like drainage layers, which you have to have in a humid tank or else the bottom will just turn to mud because you're spraying it down all the time. That means you are buying uh, hydroballs or just some sort of false bottom and you're also buying a mesh barrier or some sort of barrier to prevent the soil from going down to the rocks and making mud. So that is a couple extra things that you do have to purchase, but the plants for those bioactive tanks are going to be basically the same to find. Basically any store that sells something like a pothos for a human tank is going to sell something like aloe vera or succulents for an arid tank. And if you are trying to figure out space requirements, I mean, it's going to depend on the animal. These are basically the same. However, many humid animals are generally going to require taller tanks as opposed to short and wide tanks because we're looking at animals that live in rainforest as opposed to that live on flat desert. Obviously there's thousands of reptile options here, but in general, just looking at the most common pet reptiles, crested geckos and chameleons are both animals that require tall tanks. Not really, I guess, as common, but cave geckos, crocodile skinks, they require much smaller tanks than something like a bearded dragon. They are much smaller animals. And then we look at the more desert sorts of species. We have bearded dragons that need big, long tanks. Leopard geckos, they need short, long tanks. Hog noses need pretty small, but flat tanks. So just also kind of keep that in mind as well. Do you want a tall display forest piece or do you want a long display desert piece? <laughs> Again, generalization, this does not apply all the time. And the last section is just plants. Um, obviously, in a more humid environment, you're going to look at plants that like humidity, that like to be wet. Whereas a desert environment, we're looking at plants that don't need a lot of water. So obviously a lot of options there for either of them, but for more humid tanks, you're gonna be looking at things like pothos and sometimes philodendron, depending on what kind of animal is going in there. Ferns, so many different kinds of mosses, some ficus plants, peperomia, bromeliad, you're going to get a very rainforesty look as opposed to a more arid setup, which is where you're going to have things like succulents, aloe vera, sans severia. I love sans severia. I love those plants so much. Reminder, I need to water mine because it's been a little bit. ZZ plants and anything really that is okay not being watered for a while. But that is it. That's all that I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at some of the differences between humid and arid. And maybe if you were needing help with that final decision, maybe this video helped. Hopefully. I don't know. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is a wonderful company that continues to work with us here on Els Reptiles to bring you guys very affordable tanks for your arboreal animals or terrestrial animals or whatever you are looking for. They make giving that animal a front opening tank affordable for you. Super easy to install. You just put the conversion kit into a normal glass tank, put the silicone around it and let it air out, let it completely dry. And that's it. You are building for an animal that requires something like UVB, this can turn into an entire project. You make sure if you do happen to order one of these, you leave Els Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to Our Gangos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my social media, like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesday. This week's Instagram shout-out is here, and this week's subscribe shout-out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing, and commenting, and sharing, and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. I'm Elle, and this is Elle's Reptiles. What was that? Is it raining?
My lips are so dry and I can't find my chapstick. Uh, 